I've got a Samsung combination microwave and oven and inside the, the bulb's gone and I've got a replacement bulb here. I look, I took it apart earlier and uh, saw what kind of bulb it needs. And this is a T170 bulb, costs about five pounds so it's not cheap. So if I get close enough to look inside and I've put a piece of paper inside just so that it would light up if the light came on and I'll just put it on fast preheat. And as you see, you can't see the paper inside, so the bulb is uh, completely blown. The very first thing to do is make sure it's completely unplugged from the mains. So completely remove the plug and that makes sure that there's no mains voltage inside. Um, because it's a microwave, there is a capacitor which is charged with a high voltage, so be careful how you go around the inside of this once you've got the cover off. Uh, unfortunately, I thought when the bulb blew, originally I could maybe get inside the front and just take off the cover and, and maybe just change the bulb, but no, you have to take off the cover. And the cover is held on by a few screws, only about five of them. There's one here and four around the back. So they take out all, all five screws. Last one down in this corner down here. Now the case doesn't just slide back. You have to angle it up only slightly back, about that much. And then you have to pull back and it's quite well tucked in. So you have to pull back with a bit of force and it'll just drop off. Now if I bring this back, the bulb is around this side, uh, so the bulb is just just here. You just have to lever up a couple of tags, and it and it pulls off, and it's um it's in a it's got its own kind of holder, uh, but you can't doesn't unscrew from the holder unfortunately. That's why you have to buy the the big one, and then the main the whole thing, and this one is blown, and it also there's a bit of um you can see where it's cracked, and I guess that's where it's um that's why it's blown because it's cracked in there. Now I'm going to clean my new bulb with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Now we probably don't need to do this, but because it gets so hot in there, and I, I using the principle of car headlamps, uh, and when they get hot, they, you, they, if there's any grease, finger grease on them, they can blow. Um, so I'm just going to clean clean this off, and make sure there's no grease on this to start with. It's probably futile because when things are cooking, grease gets everywhere anyway. So okay, so they just connect it back up onto the connector connect the new one onto the connector I should say uh, and place it over there over the tags bend uh, the tags over to hold it in now it's just a matter of putting the case back on now that's not as easy as it sounds um, it's a bit, oops, a bit harder to put it back on than, uh, than it was to take off but it's not it's not difficult so inside the lid all the way around the edge there's this like groove and that has to tuck into the side of the front. So place the cover over the top, slightly back from the front. Now, first of all, it's important to get the top in and then worry about the sides later. So you just have to angle it about the angle it came out at. And then push it in at each side. Okay, so that's like that. Uh, and then, uh, on each side, you then need to just angle at the bottom back a bit, keep the top in there. Uh, but whilst the bottom's angled back, you can should be able to push the side in and then push that in there. And then you do the same on the other side. So it's exactly the same, just need to angle the bottom back a bit. Push it, push it in the side, and you'll feel when it's when it goes in enough to go in the groove.
Oh yeah, this one has to go back a bit, a bit further. There, and there it goes in there. So that one just needs to angle back a bit further. Then it's a matter of uh, putting the screws back in. I, I put the screws back in the same kind of process on anything I take the cover off of. I'll put them in and I'll screw them up so that they're not so they're almost about to tighten down but not quite tightening down. I go around and do them all like that. That makes sure that they all fit in. Do the ones in the back first, and then the one in the side. And then once one's in the side, you know that they're all capable of being screwed in now, and that they can all position in. Otherwise, if you tighten one down, then once some of the holes out of line, and they can be a pain to try and line them up afterwards uh, and then once they're all in like that just tighten them down but you just need to, to bite them up so you don't need to over tighten them because because it's just sheet metal you don't want to you don't want to make them really tight you just want to get them up to the point where they're about to bite and then just a little little turn a little bit of a turn later not not much of a turn though just enough to stop them shaking out And the last one on this side. So, so I'm back around the front again, and now I'm going to try it out by putting on fast preheat again and start. And there's the light comes on, great, excellent.